Congratulations on your new purchase. The F-Machine Trembler is one of the most sophisticated masturbation devices on the planet. You're going to have a lot of fun using your Trembler, but before you can start to use your machine, you need to set up the receiver so it's personal to you. First select the latex sleeve best suited to you. There are three sleeve sizes, medium, large, and extra large. For this demonstration, we'll be using the large sleeve, which suits the average size penis. Thoroughly wash the talc off your sleeve and leave it to air dry while you assemble the rest of your receiver. There are cutting marks along the edge of the receiver to help you cut to the correct size. These are marked in inches, which is the global standard unit for penis length. Measure your penis from the base, abdomen side, to tip. Take the cutting ring and slide it down the receiver to the mark that suits your penis size. Use the insulation tape provided to secure the cutting ring to the receiver. The larger flange of the cutting ring should be facing the section of the receiver that you will later discard after cutting. Gently start cutting the receiver, taking great care not to cut yourself. Once you've cut into the receiver tube, we recommend that you now only cut with the edge of the blade that is closest to you and that you rotate the receiver frequently away from you whilst cutting. This is to help ensure a cleaner, straighter cut. The cut doesn't have to be perfect, but a better cut will ensure a closer fitment of the end cap. Discard the excess section of the receiver. Remove the cutting ring and keep the future reference. Remove the provided sandpaper from its envelope and place on a flat surface. Sand the edge you have just cut on your receiver until it is mostly flat and smooth. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, a tolerance of 5mm is acceptable. Also sand the inner and outer edge of your cut to clean up any sharp edges. Wash and dry your receiver to get rid of any cutting debris. Remove the end cap from the top cap. Take the provided glue and mix an equal amount of part A and part B thoroughly with the supplied stick. Make sure to do this in a well ventilated area. Liberally apply the glue around the inner edge of the end cap where it is going to connect to the receiver. Make sure you apply the glue to the inner edge of this overlap as this section of the end cap is tapered. Put the end cap onto the receiver and rotate it to ensure an equal spread of the glue and an airtight fit between the two pieces. Clean off any excess glue from both inside and outside of the joint using a damp cloth. You should then leave the glue to set for a minimum of 30 minutes. Check for air leaks by covering the large end with your hand and gently pressuring the cylinder with your mouth. If you detect a leak, mix a little more glue and carefully apply along the joining edge inside the cylinder. Next, feed your clean dry sleeve into the receiver. The thicker section of the sleeve should be at the base of the receiver. Stretch the sleeve back over the bottom of the receiver and butt it up to the flange using your thumb and forefinger. Pull the top end of the sleeve to take up any slack inside the receiver. Next, measure one inch up the sleeve from the end cap. This is approximately seven ribs on the sleeve. Using the provided scissors, cut and discard the excess sleeve. We advise cutting only one layer of sleeve at a time using the rib line as a cutting guide. This will ensure an accurate cut. Stretch and fold the top section of the sleeve back over the top of the receiver and use the thumb and forefinger method to butt it up to the ridge line once again. If you have any excess sleeve that overlaps the rib line, you may need to trim this back a little further as this will prevent the lip from fitting correctly. Check the duckbill valve is present in the top cap and that the inside lid seal is installed correctly. Put the top cap over the receiver and click it firmly into place. Your receiver is now complete and ready for connection to your machine. Remove the silicon tubing from your box. Remove the protective cover from the tube port on your receiver and attach the hose. Also attach the hose to the post on the left side of your machine. Plug in your power cables and turn the machine on, remembering to always connect the cables to your machine first before flicking the on switch on the machine. The throw and thus power of your machine should be set to minimum from the factory. You can adjust it like so. We recommend a low power setting while you get used to the controls of the machine. Once you are comfortable with the operational features, such as speed and suction force, you can start to increase the intensity with crank throw adjustments as just demonstrated. Remove the remote and insert the supplied battery.
controls for your remote are as follows. Plus and minus buttons control the speed of operation. There is a start and stop button. The arrow buttons control the suction power of the receiver. Arrow down for more suction, arrow up for less suction and more receiver travel. Suction and travel control is achieved by adding and removing air from the system. As you press the remote buttons, you will hear solenoid valves and air being sucked in or out of the system each time the pump cycles. Keep your finger on the buttons until the desired combination of suction and travel is achieved. This may take a little practice. Liberally lubricate your receiver and insert your penis, either flaccid or erect. Start slowly with a low speed. You will be sucked firmly in and then steadily build up to an almighty trembling climax. Once your mission is completed, disconnect the hose and pop off the top cap from your receiver. Wash your receiver with mild soap under a warm tap. Use a supply brush to gently scrub inside. Be careful not to get any water in the air hole of your receiver. You can cover this with your thumb while washing. Return the receiver with the top cap off to allow it to dry fully. Trembler is now ready to suck and fuck again whenever you are.